Okay. Um. So, with our framework in place about the historical three-dimensional side of the bullshit of today, of today's world, um, I would like to introduce some concepts that are really cool. So, one could argue that an ancestral practice for most people, an indigenous practice for most places around the world, would include like a wellness practice that just in general allows you to have like a healthy energy body, right? And um, like your energy body is not separate from your physical body. It's like a continuum. And your energy body can affect your physical body. If you have right hip issues, it could be because you're stashing guilt and shame in your right hip. If you have pain in your left shoulder, it could be because that is where we store grief. And if these feelings that we are unwilling to release, like just if we're unwilling to feel into them or re like feel into them and then therefore release them, then they become stuck in our energy field and they send out vibrations which can actually attract more of that same thing and so you can attract more sadness and like more guilt so there's spiritual hygiene that largely requires us to be mature people who address what is happening in us and in our bodies. And with that being said, there have long been practices of maintaining healthy relationships with our ancestors um, because there was knowledge and understanding that unhealthy ancestors can create, like, in a similar way, I guess, that they will put off frequencies off your body because you have, you have, you have literally constructs in your energy field that are always there, 10 inches on either side, the right side is the father, the left side is the mother, those are your ancestral information, like literally surrounding you at all times, being a lens through which you see the world and through which you project your energy. And if there is disharmony and, or another way of thinking that, sad stories or painful stories that were the tone of their lives then you will also carry that tone. And it is, um, it's like you can, you can address it in a lot of different ways. There's a lot of ways to do ancestral repair. But one of the ways that I connected with was because what I heard was from Daniel Four, this man who does, like he's like just studied indigenous practices in like a respectful, cool, like an honorable way that I can get behind because he honored the colonization aspect to things. Um, and he's been learning practices from indigenous people all over the world for like decades. And now he's just really knowledgeable and one of the things that he says is that as people, we carry energetic layers around us. 
which to me that kind of makes sense because it's like if you look at a cell it looks exactly like a galaxy it's like and then there's like our body is an ecosystem and then there's like the ecosystem of society or like an ecosystem in nature um so there's levels to this shit and the things that I connected were that in creating in our history of America um, a false narrative about particularly being white or not white um, where that established a new tonal quality to one of the layers of each of our experiences, which is the society that we live in. Um, I think in some ways what it did was just poke a hole in that layer because it's not a true story. Like we created a lot of lies that are now the foundation of what we come to know ourselves within. And I have known this for a long time. I've lived, I've lived through it forever, my whole life, and I've lived understanding it for a good while. And um, I, so I do ancestral repair and I do ritual work, right? And one of the things that we do when we tap into our intuition and decide that we are going to establish relationships with our ancestors who are just, just really like people that you can talk to if you find ways. Um, in doing those practices, and I paid like this lady who was really knowledgeable to kind of walk me along and guide me so that I was safe. And we create with intention and through ritual a container for people along my lineages to rest within and then over a period of time give them offerings and allow them to like marinate in this like love and goodness and like grieve over them which a lot of indigenous people have said that grieving is a boat for you to take to a natural resting place and so without grief without feeling it um it doesn't have like enough force to like carry on and so this whole container thing, it allows people to be held, to be seen, to be honored, and then um, like using a guide along that lineage, which is, it takes too much explanation, but I have a relationship with a guide along each of my lineages. And with that spirit assistance, we then let them out of that container and just send them on their merry way to this ultimate place of rest where they can be connected with source. And that makes so much sense to me. Um, but I'm also learning energy work, which is more specifically addressing our energy bodies which also in ritual work and ancestral repair work it is heavily emphasized that you need to have a healthy energy body because you don't want to be vulnerable to the realness of other spirits feeling invited into places where you are not well fortified. Um, and so there's the energy work side of things which allows us to do that repair. And 
with specifically biofield tuning, which I've been learning, which has been coined by Eileen McCusick, who's freaking amazing and brilliant and has basically been developing a way for us to use tuning forks and address the ills of our energy bodies very concisely and very effectively. Um, we have created as a collective of energy workers who have worked in her practice of biofield tuning something that we call the morphic field, a container. It is wild, but that thing is alive and popping. That thing is so excited to be here. <laughs> like, it, it more or less represents the body of love and energy and information and intuition that has grown from each practitioner who has come into this lineage and then gone out into the world and worked on people and like discovered new things because it's relatively young so it's like we know the left shoulder is grief we know the right shoulder the right hip is like guilt and shame but even years into it they were still learning more things like how there's a world pain spot under your left armpit and there's an area of resentment and hatred like by your right armpit and finding like more and more ways to work with the energy and like just specifically constructs that seem to be like present in every human being's energy body which is just so freaking exciting to me and the cool thing is when you're a practitioner, you access that body of knowledge in the morphic field and it just becomes apparent to you when you're working on people. Like, it's like my intuition is just like, boom, like, that's what it feels like. And maybe that's an exaggeration, but like, the shit is just very, very real. And so while I have experienced this and honestly suffered greatly from this loss of identity that I feel like I was, we have all been robbed of because of this missing container that we don't have around us or that we have tried to reject and that we put holes in. I think it makes sense to say that our history as an American society is basically a collection of stories and experiences that like correlate to this very, like, many holes, weak, trauma-filled container of this one layer that we all coexist within. So that's why I think it's important as spiritual people to know history. Um, and additionally, I feel very hopeful because we can make containers and also, um, like healing is so possible, especially with the knowledge that we have electromagnetic bodies as opposed to chemical mechanical bodies because light particles, which are what we are, respond very quickly to sound and they just resonate with everything around them. Um, and they're always working to take care of you. And, you know, the sun is electric and the earth is magnetic and we are where the heavens and the earth meet and we are creators. 
So that's what we got to do is create. And, um, yeah. I do want to also note that talking about people's bodies is never an easy or light subject. <clears throat> Whether you're mentioning their skin color or like this whole like embodiment thing. Guys, I dated a guy in a wheelchair. The reason I started making these videos is because my heart is so broken right now that I've just been distracting myself with this project. But I was madly in love with a man in a wheelchair, I still am, and I dated him for the last year and a half. And I know I know that it is not that simple to just say that our health can just be fixed like that. And that's why people are attached to whatever medicines they have found. And so it's just a little bit abrasive to just come for people's health. Um, and just say, like pharmaceuticals are ass like but they kind of really are so I'm all I'm trying to say is that this this addressing history addressing our spiritual traumas and moving forward in an, into an embodied way which embodiment brings us that juiciness of life and connection it's simpler on paper than it is in real life because every single person's relationship with their own body is uniquely their own. And that absolutely needs to be honored. So I think that's probably a reason why creating these videos has just like taken so many attempts because I've just been like oh I can't say that like I go back and watch them and I'm just like Meredith you're being an asshole again but yeah um like medicine being colonized and if you wanted to get put on Ray Pete look him up google him he's been shadow banned like a motherfucker you always know he's on some shit when they start trying to shut him up. He has done a lot to um, question the research that we advertise as being fundamentally true into our present day understanding of science. That's how deeply are deeply we are in this shit. So am I do I hate doctors? No. But can a perfectly well-intentioned person who's brilliant go to school and study a body of information that makes sense to a degree? But do I still think they're getting in part at least indoctrinated by that to be like blind to other ways that you could take care of your body yes it's pretty simple when you just think about the fact they want us to think we're chemical mechanical because if you have a chemical problem physi which is physics then you need a chemical solution which is pharmaceuticals right and we know they're making billions of dollars on pharmaceuticals and I just think we need a little bit more critical thinking in medicine. We need a bit more um, questioning of science. Um, but I just wanted to say it a little bit more carefully than I had because I know that there are trans people who take testosterone I know that there are people in wheelchairs who 
are and and many 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 people with health issues who have found a solution that is getting them through the day to day um but i do think we should be pretty pissed off that um our drinking water carries a what's it called it carries they put something in the drinking water that calcifies the magnetite in our pineal glands which is another way of saying it doesn't allow us to access our third eyes our pineal glands and them being them containing magnetite in an electromagnetic world would indicate that we would be able to sense into stuff um more we would be more sensitive just like birds who can navigate through the sky because they're following these little magnetic pathways um and i do think we should be sensitive to the fact that you can't just bust open a conversation about how we have been politicized because it is so personal to people and it carries so much weight and it carries so much trauma and it can be done so poorly and it has been done so poorly so many times um so in saying these things it feels a lot more complete um and like the last thing too would be just okay so i mentioned ray pete that's that's really good thinking for nutrition i want to mention resma menicum my grandmother's hands this author he's someone who i have sourced a lot of the information i've told you guys about in terms of the particular traumas that we have in our bodies and he also goes in a really good depth about police bodies which is really interesting bodies the the trauma that we carry from our from our, our different political histories oh he's really specific about black bodies he like is like i'm not going to talk about what the trauma in native bodies has been like or any other people of color because he's just like that's not my lane he's a black dude ancestral medicine daniel four has been talking about this a lot this guy he's the one who he thinks critically he understands our colonial history and through that very particular framework he has gathered ancient traditions from indigenous people all over the world that apply to us that we can now use as an american society and create the, the new layer that i want us to create so uh, i think a lot of that would come from ritual repair and like rituals are beautiful by yourself but can we imagine for a second a society where we do rituals together that is not really traumatizing and cringeworthy like a lot of us feel about church just saying we used to dance and sing like we used to stomp on the ground and we used to have so many beautiful traditions that nourished our experiences of human life immeasurably and allowed us to live in honorable relationship with other than human spirits such as plant life and beyond animal life everything baby you name it i know there's aliens i know there's fairies i know i got angels yeah um and then what's the other one i think if you're interested in learning more critical thinking some really strong kind of starting places would be read uses of the erotic by audrey lord she goes in okay she she goes in and that is an essay that has given me life and i would say the fire next time by james baldwin 
because that's a huge one where he explains that when white people go and learn about what other members of our society are living through, we lose our identities. And that's a very complex thing to try and understand. I have certainly been through it. And so rebuilding an identity outside of a colonialist framework, it's useful to use astrology. It's useful to have friends and family. It's useful to meditate. It's useful to get energy work. But there will always be that layer in establishing your sense of self that comes only from the society you live in. And that is a layer that I think we can all agree could desperately use a little bit of help. So, I feel a bit more satisfied with this video. I feel like this one finally made some sense. The other ones I was totally talking out of my ass. All right, good night guys.